good last five minutes. <laughs> that as well as can be expected. Yeah, I know it's, it's and that's one of the things I know that's what we talked about the past couple of weeks and kind of touch on that, you know, what kind of things we can be doing right now. Um, so we're going to start off with our uh, testimonies like we always start um, just the first 10 to 15 minutes or so. So if anybody wants to share anything as far as um, let's go for any positive, positive uh, testimonies between now and last Thursday. I'll start off. Go ahead, Tasha. So um, I was going through and reading. So I ha I'm I'm able to work from home. So um, I don't have as much time during the day as I would if I wasn't working. But um, I've been intentional about taking my lunch. And so in doing so, I've been going through my client list and just reaching out to them and just, you know, sharing one checking on them just to see if they're doing okay but then also to um to kind of just drop some some nuggets in their mind or drop some um i won't say nuggets but just drop some things you know in their um in their mind to think about you know as far as traveling next year and in doing so i um i've been able to um book three three trips for next year um, but just, you know, so just reaching out, checking on my clients and, um, and then offering suggestions just kind of based off of what they, their travel habits have been over the past couple of years and then offering something new and exciting to them. So that's mine. So, so, so people are still planning, you know, planning ahead, even you know, as of now, still planning ahead for future travel. Anybody else want to want to share anything? Yeah, Maurice, just Jamal. Um, with all the you know the stuff that's going on, um, most of the people, and you know, my customers are looking at rescheduling versus just canceling. So that's been a good thing. And, you know, people are reaching out about, you know, future trips because they feel like there are, um, there are deals out there, you know, and they want to take advantage of them. So you know, that's a good thing. And also just kind of doing inventory of my business, you know, looking at things I could be doing a little bit different to allow me to um, take the business to the level where I really want it to go. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, and then we have to think about, too, as, you know, this is going to end. So once it's over, um, we're looking at another, another wave season pretty much. So – it's, it's, it's key to really position yourself, your business right now in order to kind of capitalize on what we all know is, is to come uh, once it's all kind of kind of fades away. So uh, when it does, anybody else want to want to share anything? Yeah, Maurice, this is uh, Irvin. How you doing? Oh, what's up, Irvin? You doing good? Too much. Yeah, I, um, I've been managed to keep a cruise for the end of the year with some folks from South Carolina. And I also got some people going to um, Cancun in, in, in November. So they, they decided to try to tough it out and see what's gonna happen. And then I have a cruise for next summer in June and a group trip in, at the end of July. But the, but the one thing through all this um, and working with some of the vendors, you, we've kind of seen which vendors will try to work with you and which ones are kind of Kind of not friendly, I guess you could say, but but to have the betterment of a word, I guess. Uh, some of these vendors will do their best to try to take care of you and help you out, and then some of them will just let you grind on your own. So it's, it's good to kind of see that. So it gives you a perspective of who you really want to work with. All 
I guess that's a good point. Um, yeah, a lot of people do have preferred vendors and suppliers. I know I do. And um, a lot of a lot of people are having to, to work from home right now, um, which, you know, everybody's not equipped to, to, to work from home as far as uh, the companies, as far as resources. But uh, just a, a roadblock or a hurdle we have to kind of get past <clears throat> with everything that's going on. Anyone else want to – we still have – to have about six or seven more minutes. Hey, Mari, this is Lisa. Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. How you doing, Lisa? I'm amazing. Trying to hide from the five-year-old right quick so I can say something. <laughs> um, as you stated, you know, several of us... I'm sorry, somebody's trying to talk? No, you got it. Oh, hey, Jamal. <laughs> um, several of us are working from home. Um, you know, a lot of people are thinking, oh, teachers are at the house doing nothing. Lies they tell. So I've been able to have one laptop for um, teaching my babies online, the other laptop for, you know, business stuff. And it's been going pretty well. What I realized is, and Jamal, don't laugh when I say this, I've been leaving money on the table. Again, second time I've done this. Um, I think it was last week I was speaking to Irvin about Blue Diamond Resorts. And we were trying to figure out, you know, what was the deal, why we didn't have the Blue Diamond Resort reward cards and why we wasn't getting our money. Well, come to, um, come to figure it out, um, they haven't reissued out the cards yet because they have a number saying you can call, but you actually can't. You have to ask us an inquir inquiry online. I did that and found out that several of my bookings from two years ago, Maurice, two years ago, was never confirmed. Okay? So when I checked on that, which I think it was last Wednesday I checked, I had 15,000 points confirmed. Now, for those who are not familiar with Blue Diamond, for every 5,000 points, you get $50. You're probably thinking, that's it. Keep listening. Just wait a minute. So I was talking to this young lady, and she said, well, I see you have several bookings that have never been confirmed. Can you send me the travel document? Absolutely. Attached them right on over. So it went from um, 15,000 to 81,000 points. Somebody do that now for me right quick. 81,000. On top of, um, hopefully, this nice virus stuff will be gone, and I get to go on um, to Planet Hollywood in June, and if that's the case, I will end up with 106,000 points after the um, June trip. So, Anybody that's booking with Blue Diamond Resorts, make sure you go to Blue Diamond Rewards, Agent Rewards, because it's worth every $50 you could get. That's all I have, Maurice. If, if you don't want your points, and if you forget, um, let me give you my email, and you can send them right over to me. Look, I knew you was going to say it. <laughs> you know, I'm in a different club now, so my mind's kind of going, you know, nah, all you. over the place. But hey, I won't forget any longer. When she told me how many points I was missing out on and we needed to confirm, I couldn't send those travel documents fast enough. So it's very important that you keep up with all of your documents because you never know. Might need them two years later, right? So thank goodness I did. And although it's only like $530 right now, but once June's um, trip goes forward, which I'm hoping it still will, it will be a little over a thousand dollars cash in my pocket. So wait a minute, Alyssa. <clears throat> How many points did you say you had? I started off with fifteen thousand. Uh-huh. That was sitting there. Now, these points never expire. I had no idea that a trip from two years mm -hmm. ago never was confirmed. Meaning Blue Diamond has to make sure, reach out to the resort, make sure they actually go on the trip, make sure they didn't leave early. I had no idea because I hadn't been checking on my stuff. That's my fault. And she said, well, I'll do it for you. She emailed me back and said, hey, you know, everything's been confirmed within five days. You will see your points have been confirmed. And within two days, it went from 15000 to 81000 And once I... Complete the trip in June, it'll be 106,000 points. Okay, 106. And you said for every thousand, every 5,000, it's $50. Okay, so. Yep. And the way $1, they. $1,060. Absolutely. Uh huh. Okay. And the way that 
And the way they determine the points simply will be the room category, how many nights they stay, all that type of stuff. Okay. So if nobody wants their points, um, you guys can send them to me. Well, I sure went back and added mine, so I ended up with a pretty good bit myself because I had some travelers going to St. Lucia, and my, as a matter of fact, I got some travelers hopefully get to go to St. Lucia and, um, at the end of July, and so I had to put all of those on there, and it made a big significant uh, difference in what I was getting back myself. That's awesome. Uh, and then, and for all our new people, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Alyssa. Too. When you're comparing resorts, resorts such as, you know, like, say, Moon Palace compared to, oh, my gosh, in fact, the, the other one Irvin was asking me about. But when you're comparing them, what I do now is not only look at what the vendor is um, offering, but I also look at, okay, how many other ways can I get paid from this one trip? You know, with Moon Palace, if they go to Jamaica, look at all the other ways you can get paid outside of the vendor. If it's a Blue Diamond Resort, look at all of the other ways you can get paid out of the vendor. So I'm looking at that, too, because it's going to benefit you in the long run once they travel and come back. That's all I have, Maurice. So basically, she's saying, yeah, you can get paid more than once than just a commission. That's that's a great thing to, to have, extra money. Right, right. Paid other house off, right? Extra $1,000 would not, would not be bad on top of your commission. Yeah, you know, if you do the service fees, the service charges on top of that. Absolutely. Um, and then depending on what vendor you use, you know, you get those rewards or incentives as well. Absolutely. Because some vendors give free nights and we love freebies. Definitely, definitely love free. This stuff good so so this is a good way to open up any well i guess anybody anyone else i guess we have time for one more person if anybody else want to want to share anything before we get started any positive testimonies new clients You want to save a save travel plans, reschedule. Hey, Maurice, it's Nikki. Hey, Nikki, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Good. Um. So, well, good evening, everybody. I um, I had a I didn't book the cruise, but I did the hotel and air. So I had a client's cruise. Um, she was doing the seven day cruise out of Vancouver. Next month, that ended up getting, uh, well, in May, it ended up getting canceled. So I think it was with Royal Caribbean. So it ended up getting canceled. And so she was really devastated because she was like, well, I really need a cruise. Um, I really needed a trip because she hasn't really traveled in probably like the past few years. Um, just because, you know, life and things like that. And so I told her, I said, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I said, we're going to get you on another trip. And so just kind of like that reassurance you know, really helped her. And she was like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, you know, she's kind of been like texting me positive messages and thank you messages and um, things like that. And so, which that kind of helped me because I was feeling a little down. Um, my trip that we were doing this summer, we decided, well, I kind of did it. Um, but my big trip that we were doing this summer to Africa, we decided to, uh, it was, we came to the conclusion to postpone it to next year. And so, but even before when she texted me like, Hey, can we talk tonight about, you know, the trip? And I said, sure. I had already called the vendor to see our options. Like, Hey, what, you know, we only put the deposit down. Can we get our money back? What are our options that we can do? So she won't physically get her money back, but we can use that money towards another trip. Um, thankfully I hadn't put money towards, you know, like anything else. So that really helped. Um, so we can just take that smaller amount and just use it towards any trip. So we're just going to go towards, um, and just do it next year, which even from the time of starting putting the trip together up until now, her and I have both learned so much. 
about it. Um, the process of, you know, doing business with, you know, various vendors, things like that, and putting all this together that it was one of those kind of things where like, okay, well, we can do this again. We know what to do. I, I got a game plan now. I can add this in, take this out. Like it's so much more that I can do now when we get ready to roll this out next year. So, but you know, I'm not a little discouraged, but it's okay. But it's, we're still going to get that back next year. And we're going to tell them, you know, we're going to tell everybody because some people still want to go. So, Hey, if y'all still want to go, I'll still book your trip for you. So I know it's not going to be a total loss. Um, however, I think it's, you know, it'll be for the best. And then we're just going to keep moving and, you know, keep pushing forward and just get ready for next year. Lord's willing. There you go. And we've seen a lot of articles about, you know, horror stories about the OTAs, online retailers. Uh, well, we have Expedia, the issue with bookit.com. So we have, you know, people that represent us as professionals like like Nikki that, you know, go above, beyond, go the extra mile um, for their clients. Uh, Urban mentioned rescheduling the client too, I believe, opening up. You know, that goes a long way. Uh, not as not not just for your reputation, but it's, you know, all of us actually. So that's key. Yeah, because her reputation and her name, in my opinion, was more important for me right. than mine. Like, yes, I have a part in this too, so it's my business and my name out there. But this was kind of like her trip, so it was it was more about you know saving grace and things like that. And you know, I'm not worried about all the other stuff because you know I know God's got me and I'm going to get mine. So and I'm still going to get mine. However. It's about, okay, what can we do to really help everybody? And thankfully, I haven't had any problems or any nasty clients because I've got another friend who's a travel agent. And she had a group trip that was going out, like, I think next month or in May. And so with everything going on, she had to end up canceling, but she didn't cancel. She moved it. And so, mm -hmm. like, some of her clients really got nasty with her. And so it's like, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a lot going on. I'm very thankful that I haven't had to deal with that. Um, but it's, yeah. So I just pray for the other, I just pray for the people. Definitely, definitely. And it's definitely time for us to work together as well. Um, like in your situation, that's key. So we're going to continue actually talking about uh, the current state of things in the industry. Um, kind of talking about, you know, things that we can do right now in this moment to actually improve. Can y'all hear me good? Yeah. The audio fun? Yeah, you fine. Okay, yeah. Think, okay, cool. Thanks, Jamal. And things that we can do right now to actually uh, improve our business. Um, you know, not a lot of people are booking right now, but, you know, you can take this time to really focus on things that we may have put off or put to the side um in our business uh an opportunity for the for us to learn new things um an opportunity for us to learn new systems and resources that can actually help us be more efficient and streamline our business so you know definitely an opportunity for us to kind of kind of grow even in this period where, where people aren't really looking because the one thing is you know when you think about 9-11 you think about uh dominican republic the issues last year uh, you know, there are some issues in Jamaica, uh, Paris recently, as far as travel, uh, traveling in the Middle East. So a, a lot of times we have major incidents like this, you know, we, we, the one thing that we know is that the, is that the industry is going to bounce back and most likely uh, it's going to bounce back even stronger, you know, than, than what it was before. So we just have to make sure everything on our end is in line so that we can be prepared but you can guarantee it's going to be a wave, a wave of, um, you know, people wanting to travel, especially, you know, being quarantined to your home for a matter of weeks. You know, everybody's going to want to leave the house, even if it's just not even the international, but domestic travel. So we just have to be prepared for that. So me and Jamal, we, we're just going to talk through some um, some points as the article that we came across. Um, and a, a great article actually discussing, you know, right now, what can we do to actually 
improve our business. So travel is a fun industry, of course, but you do have times like this where it doesn't seem so fun, but it's like I said, it's just not, it's not a period that's going to last forever. So what are we doing? What steps are we taking to actually improve our operations, streamline things to where we can provide exceptional service uh, to our clients? So Jamal, you want to add anything? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was, I'll let you finish. Um, you know, like like he was mentioning, you know, I, I believe in, in all the things I've been listening to, because that, that's what, really what I've been doing, is kind of sharpening a saw a little bit. And most of the things that I've heard was, you know, get ready for what's to come. You know, it's the same way, like Urban said, you know, we, we're paying attention to the vendors who are more favorable, you know, for taking care of things. And people are watching too, you know, how you react into this um this situation. And basically they're gonna choose who they do business with. Um, I will tell you this, you know, really work on your content. So when people are ready to fork over this money, because they're they gonna fork it over, trust me. Um, you just make sure you're in the front of it, you know, as far as getting your business there, being ready, and and really this time right now, it kind of feels like November and December fell in October where many people wasn't um, making the bookings right away because it's around the holidays, you know, so, you know, the, the, the money was kind of conserved for um, Christmas and, and, you know, holiday things they may have to do. So just guys get, get ready. And you know that, you know, it's just right now we can't control what's going on, but we can control what we could do with our businesses good stuff man and it, it's really it's really a time for us to, to really take a step back and and you usually don't do this at the beginning of the year i mean we're still in the first quarter of the year but now uh we have the gift of time so we can take a step back and really analyze your business uh from a performance standpoint financially um how efficient are you with communicating with your clients uh, website, email, you know, just those small things that we really sometimes don't, well, we think we don't have the time to, to kind of address when we're, especially, if, you know, in the middle of wave season, uh, what should have been wave season. So really we, we have that gift. It's a unique opportunity to kind of stay, take, take a step back, like I said, and, and, and kind of focus on any room for improvement uh, for your business. So, and, and I'm going to read this quote, actually. Many many of you have been so busy working in your business, you haven't had time to work on it. Anyone feel like that? Yes. Nobody? Only me? <laughs> you don't count, Maureen. No, I agree. I have. Right. So, so who? I'm sorry, who was that? That was Nikki, I think. That was Nikki. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so, so you agree that you see this in a, as an opportunity to kind of, kind of work more on your business, um, aside from the client interaction aspect of it and, and booking. Yes. Um, that that is the goal, and that's what I've been hearing. I was on a couple of webinars, and that's what they talked about. But I'll, you know, I might say some more at the end. But yes, that that is the key right now. Like that is key, working on your business. Right. Now that's not saying that we still shouldn't take advantage of, because uh, believe me, there are a lot. I think Jamal just yeah, Jamal just mentioned this too. It's a lot of people out there that are. I mean, I have a group that just contacted me in the last few days that, that want to book for, for early fall. Um, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of people still who see this as an opportunity to, to kind of take advantage of low rates um, and, and travel for the rest of the year and going into 2021. Mm -hmm. Anyone and, else? Go ahead, Jamal. And, and I mean, it's a great time to, to kind of look at your strategy a little bit more as well. Cause you know, right now, I mean, you don't see a lot of buy, 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 but I tell you Royal Caribbean and um, Carnival, they, they going very, very hard in the emails with, you know, 
some of the promotions. But I really say is, you know, it gives you a different perspective. And sometimes your perspective can be bondage for you. So, you know, just look at your business with a fresh set of eyes, especially in this time right here. I know I have, you know, I told Maurice, you know, I, I kind of, I feel like um, the things I told you not to do, I did when I was scrolling on the internet and just kind of looking, 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 kind of figuring out what to do. And I'm like, why not listen to some of these podcasts? Why not get to some of these certifications? Because now this right here can lead to more content. And like he said, you know, since people are looking, content is king. Content is king. You know, nothing's wrong with making people be more informed on what's going on. But it's also a great time to kind of get people in a, in a, in a different kind of mood. Because you, you guys see what's going on with the DJs, you know, doing things. And people get excited about that, right? It, it, it hasn't been done now that I know of. But you kind of see a different way of people leveraging what's going on to get people engaged. And that's one thing we're going to have to do. As, as agents or advisors in our business to get people more engaged, either that either that's giving out information that can make them be more informed. You know, there's nothing wrong with this many cases, that many cases, but now I feel like you're selling fear. You know, sell hope. You know, like different things you can do to stay safe, or when you do decide to travel, where would you like to go? You know, once you get out your house the house, what are some things you like to do with your family, you know, things of that nature to create content because people are looking. They're just like me, scrolling on the feed. And some of you may not do this because you, you may have followed the instructions that I didn't follow. Looking on the feed to, to see what's out there, you know, that, that's going to catch their eye. Yeah, people online twenty, literally 24-7 right now. now. Now say that again, Maurice. They're online more now because – a lot of them yeah. are working from home. Working from home, yeah, yeah. Um, just like Jamal said, take a take a look at it with a fresh set of eyes, and then just ask yourself questions like, "What if? What if? You know, I completely change the focus of my business. What if I choose a different market to actually target? What if I choose a different niche that I actually want to focus on? Um, whether it be cruises or you know." Uh, adventure travel, um, romance travel, honeymoons, destination weddings, or what if you introduce service fees to your business? Uh, what if you stop taking on all clients and just focus on ones you actually want to work with? So now is the time that you actually have to kind of, you know, focus on these things and fine tune some things in your business. Um, and, and, and like I said, it just makes, makes things a lot easier. And with this pause that we have, um, or the slowdown, actually, not pause, but the slowdown, you know, it's really a time to be able to do those things. So we're going to talk about four areas that you, sh you should actually look at in your business um, during this, this time that we have. And Mo, one, Mo, go ahead. before you, before you um, move ahead, um, I want you guys to think about these fees. Um, I was on a webinar Saturday, Saturday, and I didn't share it with Maurice, so got busy scrolling on the internet um but one agent she has seven streams of income outside of the commission so anybody does and you can say yes or no or one or two whatever um does anybody have a retainer fee for their services i'm going to say no in the chat for myself i don't does anybody have a booking fee What about markups? <laughs> and, and this is the one that's going to really get you guys. What about a cancellation fee? Does anybody have a cancellation fee? And, and think about it. If you call VE right now to cancel scheduled air, is that a fee? Don't, don't they charge us a fee? Well, charge the client a fee, right? Then she has the service fee. And this was the one that really hit me. How many times have you guys heard, you know, when the client give you the information um, and it's something spelled wrong or the birthday's wrong and they may not pay attention to it till it's probably time to travel. Anybody ever had that happen? Oh yeah. 
And, yes. And when that happens, who has to get on the phone and fix it? We do. Right? For hours. Yeah. She charges a service fee. Oh, if you're going to want me to change that, that's she doesn't say it like that. But she details all this in the information when she gives it to a client. Kind of like that consultation. We're going to go over this together so you can say yay or nay to everything that I want you to understand. Because, you know, sometimes people read stuff and they're selective about what they retain. And, and she also has a membership fee. And merchandise. So just think about other streams of income that you can add to your travel business outside of this to commission. Because I was on um, Chappelle's webinar. I can't remember the person who it was. And basically, one of the things they, re they, they really drove home is the commission is a thank you from the vendor. You need to get paid before they travel. So, Maurice, you could continue. I didn't want to miss that before we went ahead. No, that's a good point. That's perfect because especially when you think about a time like this, when the, the sales volume is down now and with cancellations, what what's just, what steps are you taking and what are you doing to, to kind of generate income, um, you know, now income? You know, a service fee or, or charges or these charges are usually paid up front. Um, but let's say if the trip is in 2021 May, then you don't get that commission until they actually travel. So that's definitely a good, um, these are good to implement into your business. I know I use, uh, you know, service charges. Um, I didn't think about a, a actual return retainer fee in addition to that. Um, I've heard of the cancellation fees from a, a couple of, um, agents. Um, uh, but you know, that's, that's, that's a good way, like you said, to kind of, create additional streams of income with your business. Good stuff. So, so we're going to talk about four areas uh, to look at, you know, as far as, you know, like I said, during this time, and the first one we've discussed a few times, and that's the focus or our niche market that you should, you should, you should actually look at. Um, and one of the questions you want to ask yourself, are you happy with the clients that you're working with and the type of travel that you're booking? I know personally, when I first started in the industry, um, I enjoy travel. I'm passionate about it, but I'm not passionate about every single, you know, different type of travel that there is available out there. Um, and if you're not excited about it, do you think that's going to actually contribute to, um, you know, the type of service that you actually provide for your clients? That's the question you have to ask yourself. So I made the decision to, to transition over to a particular market that I focus on, and that's where my marketing is is targeted. Um, I do still service my older clients, and, and you know, and depending on the type of the travel that it is. But you know, like we mentioned earlier, also it's not it, it's okay sometimes to say no. Everything's not, not a perfect fit. So does anybody anybody having trouble trying to focus on a particular market, or does anybody? I know. Um, I think. Nikki, I don't know if Denise is on. I know a few people on here actually have markets that they target. Uh, but what, what are y'all thoughts on, on, on markets, focusing on spe specific markets? Are you asking me and Denise? Oh, that is Denise? No, it's Nikki. I don't know if Denise oh, yeah, is on. Ahead, I haven't Nikki. checked to see. Um, you're, you're definitely on point because during this time you need to be engaging to your marketing clients now because as was stated people are online looking for stuff and there's so many different niche markets out there now so specify or targeting you know those certain group of people that's going to increase your business and that's going to drive your business and so right now you need to be you know content that's what you need to be doing now, marketing right now. I heard this quote, and I want to say it right quick. It is not the best travel professional that will survive. It's the best marketer. Wow. It is not the best travel professional that will survive or will win. It's the best marketer. We are marketers as travel agents. 
whether you got into sales, travel agent, we are marketers. You need to be focusing your content on what you do. If you do destination weddings, you need to post destination pictures, pictures of destinations where people can get married at. If you want a new market, like, um, like Marie said, this is a perfect time to get a new niche market. You know, if you want, or to add a new um, area into what you're doing. I like more of a not super uber luxury like Maurice does, but I have certain, I target my clients for certain resort chains that I'm working with. I'm not booking my clients that, you know, oh, I want this and I want, no, I have a certain price point range where my clients go. So me, AM Resorts is one of my favorites because they have a plethora of various resorts and they're one of the fastest growing resorts in the Caribbean and Mexico right now. So what am I going to do during this time? I'm posting content, pictures, videos, because when people get ready, oh, and market, oh, wouldn't this be a great girl's trip? Wouldn't this be a great honeymoon? Okay, I'll hush now. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Yeah, you, you're right, Nikki. Um, when, when you get more familiar with other brands, and I, I know with, with Maurice, you know, some of the properties he would mention to me, they would go right over my head because it wasn't a Ryu. <laughs> and no knock on Ryu. But now I'm seeing these other brands, and I'm like, wow. They, 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 they tend to lean towards certain type of, you know, niche markets. So now... You know what you know I, I employ everybody to focus on is, is just kind of drill down on the type of person you want to do business with and what's that word she used today maurice um what's the word she used today what's it? Uh, my notes right here ideal client avatar ideal client i c a ideal client avatar so now you can start thinking about the ideal client, not the one that's trying to tell you well i saw it and that's another thing you know it's unfortunate what happened to the otas the online travel agencies so now that's something we can leverage and, and, and it's a great time like nikki said to, to get content out there because travel agents or travel advisors whatever we call ourselves right now we are more in demand due to the stuff that's going on right now because i've had clients reaching out and you know What's the status? And I let them know. Give me, give me a moment because the whole time alone, that lets them know, like, hey, I'm working for you. So now, you become more valuable to them. And and I'm, I'm telling you, when you know this niche thing, I keep hearing it. I keep hearing it. So now I have time. I, I employ each and one of you, each one of you, to start thinking about a niche you want to roll into. You know, and if you don't know. It, it'll come to you, but you, you have time. And that's one thing about us. We're still babies in this. So get this right here, give you more time to focus on something that you really, really want to do versus just chasing a dollar. And sometimes it get away from you. You get that $120 and you don't dealt with that person for 40 hours. Like, was it really worth it? Hi, this is Gisela. In reference to the niche, I was listening, excuse me, to Nikki, and she was saying about certain resorts um, that she likes for her clients to go to. I guess my question is, so are you or the travel agent into that particular type of travel that you're, or niche that you're actually promoting? Do you go to these particular, you know, higher class type resorts? Are you actually doing the very niche that you want to, to promote? For me, yes. Because what your niche market comes from is what you're passionate about. Okay. I sell Disney because I grew up going to Disney. Maybe I can tell you how you can go to Disney. So when people call me, it's like, okay, how you want to do Disney? Are we doing budget friendly, middle, you know, moderate budget? Or are we doing all out Disney? I've been to Disney World several times so I can sell it. Right. I've been to a couple of um, AM resort brands and I've taken their courses. So your niche market is not just something you pull from the sky. Oh, well, you know, let me do destination weddings. Um, so I, now, I, that was different for me because I kind of got thrown into that, but we made it work. 
Um, but say you want to do something like family travel with family and young kids or generational travel, grandparents, parents, and, you know, three generations of kids, you know, three generations traveling. If you don't have a, like, I'm not going to say it's harder, but if you don't have a family, like currently, if you don't have kids or be around kids a lot, it's going to be a little more challenging for you to do that or a person that doesn't like kids. Because you need to know what resorts is going to be good for everybody. It's going to be family friendly, or we might be able to, you know, grandma and grandpa, they kind of like to be alone a lot, want to be with the family. So maybe I need to find a resort that is like a Hyatt Ziva or Zalara. Hyatt Zalara um, is for adults only, but Hyatt Ziva is family friendly. And we can kind of intermingle with each other so grandma and grandpa can come over you know, with the family and the kids, and then grandma and grandpa can go back over and be with all the adults. Right. Okay. So it's, so when you start looking at what you're passionate about, what you are around the most, then that's when you will start, it'll start to formulate for you. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And Gisela, Gis Gis right? I'm saying your name correct? No, it's Gisela. I'm sorry, Gisela. I always do that to your name. That's um, okay. I go to these places in my mind. I, I really don't go, but I go in my mind. And what I mean by that, I go I go look at um, some of the, the digital stuff. Um, like she just said, the Zalara. I love the Zalara. You know, I love Blue Diamond Resorts. I love AM Resorts. Um, and sometimes when you, you know, this is what you want as far as a sale, it makes it so much easier to point somebody to the right product. And I'm telling you, I, I even had a young lady today tell me, and Maurice is going to laugh at this. She said, the property you sent me to in Jamaica, and I couldn't remember. And she said, the Grand. I said, oh, yeah, the Jewel Grand. She said, I love that place. But, you know, I, Playa Resorts, that's, that's where I'm going at first, you know, when it comes to certain um, destinations. And it helps you when you... Um, doing a consultation if you kind of have in your mind certain resorts and, and it doesn't have to be international because i'm noticing now um domestic travel has a lot more luxury resorts than just the brands we may be familiar with and we can point people to and sometimes when i may point you to something high you know and you, you ask me like i don't know where i want to go i've been to miami i've been to tampa you know whatever it may be you know i could point you somewhere knowing that this may be out of your budget just to bring you back to reality of a property so I don't do a whole lot of looking around to kind of get a price point that we could play with. That's that's one of the things I like to do. I like to start off high. Very high. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good stuff. But yeah, it, it is a plus. It, I mean, it, well, like you mentioned, if you um, if you can't travel to these places, then we do have the resources to, you know, and then there are the like YouTube. I, I I every single day I'm on YouTube, some kind of research or a following the page just to look at different properties, destinations, and things like that. Because you can learn a lot from um from from these different social media outlets like YouTube as well. Um, so we we talked about you know a niche market, focusing on that, and then the next area is actually this is number two, is actually marketing itself. Um, anyone use email marketing and we may not get through all four because I think this is a this is a big one here we got next anyone use calls. email marketing I'm about to start right who's that Nikki yep yep so so um we had a web there's a webinar earlier today on email marketing I know a few of us attended and the one thing that that and it's things that we've heard over and over again as far as, you know, email marketing, these different resources and third-party tools you can use to send out newsletters and things like that. But when she really broke it down in numbers um, as far as, you know, how much email marketing has increased, um, different people in our profession increased their overall revenue. Um, not sales revenue, but just not not just sales revenue, but actual uh, commission that they earn as well. 
So she took her business from what, what was it, thirty thousand uh, dollar a year business to three hundred thousand dollars, and was it less than one year? Less than one year. Yeah, one year. And a lot of that was attributed to email marketing. Um, and you probably heard this before, and, and I know I've, I've touched on this, but you know, it's one thing to have someone's Facebook contact, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, but when you have someone's email address, um, that's a little more personal, especially now everyone's at home. I, I did a little test. I sent out a hundred emails right when we started and out of a hundred of those emails in a matter of 40 minutes, almost 20 people have already opened that email. So that's 20%. So 20% already. And it ain't even been an hour yet. <clears throat> so people are, you know, sitting by their phones, sitting by their tablets, computers, you know, at home right now. So this is a perfect time to learn email marketing, um, you know, learn how to send out a newsletter. And, you know, just to start off, you don't have to send out emails every day or three times a week. You can just do a, a, a let's say a travel tip Tuesday or highlight a different property or destination once a month or once, you know, bi-weekly, once every other week. You know, just start off and, and track the analytics, see your open rates. And the thing with that is if you have a niche market or a particular market that you focus on, then you can use Facebook ads and different resources to kind of obtain this information from people. Um, that's a whole nother training we'll, we'll go in. We've done it before, we'll do it again. But obtain this contact information from people so that way now your marketing efforts are much more specific. Your uh, conversion ratio is going to be higher. Uh, attrition, um, when you think about referrals, things of that nature. So yeah, I, I just can't stress enough how important email marketing is. Anyone else use newsletters or email marketing for their clients? But no Maurice, one? you could also so you could also consider the automation part of the email marketing. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 a real good thing you can leverage as well once we learn it. You hit so, one button and you're touching, <laughs> would you say 20% of the people opened your your email and it's the people you wanted to send it to versus having a broad scope on social media where, you know, we may see your stuff, but we, we don't want to buy anything from you. You know, we, we're in the same industry. Or, right. Yeah, so you, but you're targeting, is, is more targeted, which is also good, you know. And, and we're going to get to the point where, we we taking advantage of all these things and now we just have the time to do it, you know, especially since we um in this situation that we can't control. We we have no say so over it. So now it's a great time to improve your business with different aspects and resources. Definitely. Do you guys Definitely. work full time? Uh another job? I do. I do. I do. This sounds like you all do a whole lot to be working full time. Well, we got to get the training done. You know, we have to um, encourage each other. Some of us have to fry chicken. You'd be surprised, man. We get a lot of <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm just saying, just all the stuff that you're speaking on and having to do it and then working full time, coming home, having a family, and then working your business as well. I'm just wondering, you know. If you I'll tell you what time. I learned. What I heard somebody say is that if it's your business, you put more into your business than working for somebody else. And that's true. And so, that's the only way you're going to prosper. Exactly. So if that means that you have to schedule your day, when I get home, I got to fix dinner, I got to do this, X, Y, and Z. So if that means if you don't get that time to family, kids are in bed and it's quiet time now if that means you're up to you know put in okay i gotta put in three hours for my business nine to twelve or nine to eleven make those hours count and and that's when the calendar is important um i know i do a lot of listening and and, and receiving information in the mobile office which is the car you know ricky smiley and steve harvey used to take up a lot of my time um but now if i'm driving i have this smartphone or if I'm at the job, I'm listening to something just to kind of get an idea of what I need to do. And it's up to me to, to take action. 
you know, one of the things we first learned in the business is you work your nine to five, then you work your five to nine. And it's a sacrifice, but you want to sacrifice so you don't have to sacrifice, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And, and, I, and I guess... Go ahead, Tosh. So I'm going to piggyback off of, um, off of all of them. So when I first started, I, I didn't have anything planned out. I didn't write anything down. I was just going to, you know, fly by night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. Um, and I found that I wasn't being as productive as I should be in my business. So then when I changed things around, I designed a, a planner just for my travel business. Um, but in that planner, I map out my entire day. So true, I work a, um, 8 to 430. So I'm at work. Well, while I'm at work, I'm at work. When I come home, I'll take 30 minutes to wind down, fix my dinner, and then I go back, pull my planner back out and see what it is that I have mapped out for that at, for that evening. And that's how I was able to keep things um, in perspective um, as it relates to my business. Um, and I've cut out a lot of TV. Um, you know, those things that would be considered distractions. Um, so like um, others that you've heard, I'm doing a lot of listening to different webinars, um, picking up uh, marketing tools from uh, other individuals who are successful in their business, um, attending um, you know, the webinars or, or the trainings that will sharpen my skills to put me in a position that um, I'm able to offer something that another travel agent is not able to offer. And I'm constantly looking for ways that I can be, because I had one of my coworkers ask me, what makes you different than someone else? And so my goal and my focus is always to make myself different than someone else, to be able to offer something different than somebody else. But mapping everything out is what has helped me. Oh, man, that's perfect. Because, Tasha, you touched on all four uh, areas pretty much, profitability as far as mapping out and, and analyzing things and also uh, community, um, you know, as far as mentorship and, and reaching out to other people in the industry um, for support system and, and as far as learning and, you know, we can all learn from one another. So, yeah, that definitely touched on all four areas. Um, Tasha, do you, do you use email marketing? I do. Have you I seen answered any? your question in the chat. I guess you didn't see it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't have the chat pulled up. Oh, okay, it's fine. Go ahead. So you've seen success with the email marketing? I have. Um, so I have two different businesses outside of being at work. Um, and so once I started the email marketing with one of my businesses, I saw the success of it and that and the traction that I was getting from, you know, people reading the emails or going to my social media sites and actually um, engaging. Um, so then I decided to try it in my other business, um, in my travel business. And I've seen I've seen uh, um, growth there as well. There you go. So e I mean, email is like, it's like owning real estate almost. Um, do you cross market any your, your businesses as far as like your travel clients with your other business or vice versa? I have. So with my other business, um, like at one of at the bottom of one of my emails, I um I just put a little blurb in there about my travel business to give people, you know, just you know, if you ever think about travel, click on this link. Um and I, I promoted myself. I gave myself kudos. So one, you know, somebody may not know that I own both of the businesses, but um, you know, they 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 follow me in this one business and here it is, I'm promoting another business. They're gonna go over and follow that one as well. 
Mm-hmm. So a call to action is in this. So I guess I guess that's something that we'll probably go over the next couple of weeks, like call to action and <clears throat> search engine optimization, driving traffic. Um, I guess we can go deeper into like email autoresponders that you can use, just tools you can use to kind of keep in constant contact with people. Um, definitely at this time, and it's a perfect time to kind of kind of learn that. So I I know it's something I did. You know, previously I had another online website that I that I managed for like six years and I use email marketing a lot with it and I kind of got away from that um, over the past probably year and a half couple of years of my travel business so that's something I'm personally going to incorporate starting today actually <laughs> heavily back into my business so my challenge is for everybody to between now and next Thursday um, you know try to try to do more research and we're going to talk about it next week to focus more on email marketing um and don't say you don't have an email list already because think about it if you've sent a quote to someone um if you've you know got a business card from somebody if you had a conversation about travel they gave you you know contact information any past clients that you have you already have a foundation to work with as far as emails now you don't want to spam and solicit you know, you, you know, as far as newsletters, they have to opt in for that. But, you know, one simple thing I did was send out a communication to, to all my clients as far as, you know, I'm thinking about them during this time, during the, you know, what we have going on with the virus and whatnot and travel. And if they have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to me and just, you know, stay plugged into my social media outlets and my website for any, any updates. So just a simple message like that goes a long way when you think about your client base or people that you've actually come in contact with that may not have even converted over into a sale. Um, you want to keep in contact with those people too. So it's uh, eight fifty eight. a couple more minutes. Anyone want to add anything before we, before we wrap up? Emails are the bread and butter of our business. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And I guess we'll talk about, like I said, other streams of income actually you can generate um, just by having a, you know, an email database. You know, streams of income in line with your travel business. (laughs) Anybody else? Hi, this is Lana um, from Michigan. I have hey, Lana, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm sorry I'm on your call late, um, but I have a question that you might be able to answer. Mm-hmm. I have a client who canceled a reservation today to Jamaica. Her trip wasn't until July. Um, and because the travel protection was more than her refund, she's thinking that she should have just kept the reservation. And now she's asking, is it too late to cancel the cancellation? I've never heard of that. Um, it depends on the vendor or supplier. Um, so basically the amount of money she paid, the difference between the actual payment amounts in the insurance wasn't insurance was more than, than what she actually right and, so yes what supplier is that um what i went through that um but travel impressions travel impressions okay and, and when did you cancel it uh today at about i would have to say six ish all right so you're still within 24 hours i would give them a call to see if anything can be done um, I personally, I've worked with, I worked with Vax a lot, but I haven't worked with travel impressions before, but <clears throat> given the circumstances, you're still within 24 hours with the airfare in and, um, hotel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I would, I would definitely say, uh, pick up the phone and call, give them a call. Okay. But make sure your client knows what they want to do. So you don't have to go back and forth telling the client, well, just what they say and they go back and think about it and come back. Well, let's see, you, you, you will need to know right away what they want to do 
you know, it, it'll curb your time as well. Yeah. Right. And, and I was within the last few hours, so I would actually call them like ASAP. <laughs> and I doubt if they'll turn down the money if they, they feel they're about to um, get the booking back. Right. Yeah, just call, you know. I don't think there's a wrong or right answer in this case, especially what we're dealing with. You know, they have a lot of relaxation policies as far as these cancellations. So just give them a call and be excited. Hey, I got some good news. Maybe maybe y'all can help me out. They don't right. want to Can we fix that? Yeah. Yeah, I think like Jamal said, okay. make sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I think what they thought was um, the coronavirus would still, um, you know, hold everything up. And that's still, uh, it's possible that that's true. Um, but I think they get a couple of days before the trip to cancel so that, right. she, you know what I mean? She still wouldn't get the travel protection back, but there, that amount of money that she has paid into it would be more than a travel protection. But I think she really wants to go on her trip too, though. When is the final payment due? April? 45 or May? days before, yeah. Um... What's happening so, is travel impressions is giving back the travel protection only if the trip was between now and May. So she wouldn't get right, that back right. anyway. Right, right. Um, for my clients that have inquired about canceling around that time frame, you know, we still have time, especially before final payment alone. Mm -hmm. So I've just been telling them, you know, let's just keep an eye on things over the next few weeks to see you know how things kind of progress and and then we can make a better decision then right um you know because like you say a lot of people still want to go on their trips it's just a matter of they you know we we all we just don't know what kind of time frame we're working with as far as when all this to be be over to the point to where we can actually travel so yeah um, yeah i would definitely call them to see what what options Okay. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Anyone else before we close out? All right, Jamal. Oh, I just, oh, Marius, can I say something? Sorry, I ran to the grocery store. Um, oh, that's right. Just Nikki, during right this time, up. yeah, it's Nikki. Um, just during this time with your clients, you know, we were talking about email marketing and content marketing call your clients and check on them, you know, just take maybe 30 minutes a day and just say like, Hey, you know, so-and-so, I just want to give you a call as you, because during this time, our job is to educate and not post any negative media, anything else related to what's going on, um, on our pages, but positivity, encouragement, and just say like, Hey, I'm just calling to check in on you. You know, hopefully, you know, when this is over, once this is over, you know, we'll be glad to have you back. So sometimes just that phone call checking in, they'll be like, oh, man, my travel agent. They can say my travel agent because we love the my. The power of the my is what you want. But for you to, for your clients to say my travel agent called and reached out to me to make sure that I was good, that will go a long way with them. Nikki, Nikki, that's good stuff. Yeah, it is. It really is. If you don't want to call them, give me that phone number. I'll call them for you. <laughs> you can't have my job. <laughs> Trust me, I I made that mistake with one client, and there's people sitting at home worried about their trip. They still want to go. Um, so that's why I took the initiative to send an email out to everybody. I should have did it last week. But um, <clears throat> I have been calling people, especially your groups. You know, to, if you have any groups traveling, even over the summer, late summer, just like she said, call and check on people and, you know, it goes a long way. All right. So we'll resume next Thursday, uh, 8 p.m. And everybody have a, have a good week, weekend. Stay safe. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for the call. It was really good. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Good night.